And with that, we're going to get our program started, and Jeff is going to introduce our first speaker. I always like when we can share a microphone. It's logistically very, very nice. Here's a little spotlight for you next time you talk, though. Thank you. Uh, we want you uh, to please uh, leave a little room in your belly this evening because we've got desserts coming up that we're going to ask you to be very generous and purchase desserts for your table. That's going to come up in just a bit. But to get things started this evening, it's my great pleasure to introduce this year's board chair for PABSA, a very dear friend of mine. Please uh, welcome her to the stage, Ms. Brianna Von El. Here, we'll put those down for you. Good evening. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. 2013 has been an amazing year for everyone in this room. For others, there's PAVSA. Without your continued support, not only would PAVSA not exist, but we wouldn't be able to continue to grow and provide more services to victims of sexual violence, to provide more education to our community, and to provide more advocacy to our systems. For that, I thank you. My fellow board members also thank you. I'd like to introduce them now. Tony Rubin, please stand when I call your name. Hi, Tony. Susanna Woodward. Rebecca St. George, Karen Strami, Jessica Tillman, Marlis Tanner, Jim Gaylord, Noah Hobbs, Kim Sheriff, and Mel Winkler. We'd also like to thank the Art Auction Committee, Art Auction Chair, Kelly Martin-Kurtz, all of our volunteers, and all of the staff who I would ask to stand, but I believe that they're, they're pretty busy working right now. Gracelyn, thank you. It's amazing, right? The setup, the food is delicious. They've been very generous to us. Thank you. Also to all of our business sponsors. Falsane, or I'm sorry, um, Liz Calm Hood Mason Company, National Bank of Commerce, Lizards Framing, Falsane, Balmer, Peterson, Quinn and Bayer, Chester Creek Cafe, Advance Awnings and Signs, Crenzen, let the whole world know, North Shore Bank, St. Luke's, Tim and Judy Sheriff, to our media sponsors, Fox 21, KTCO, KDWZ, and KDAL AM. Thank you. And thank you so much to Marisa's. very good to us and we appreciate it very much and we're happy to see you all here. I'd now like to introduce our executive director, Candy Harshner, who does amazing things for PAVSA, who puts in a lot of personal time, a lot of effort, um, has done a lot for this art auction and for the, and for the organization. Please give everyone, or give Candy a, an applause. Thank you. Thanks that um, Brianna just gave to everybody. And um, 
Um, we have an amazing board and we have an amazing staff and as Brianna said, I would love to introduce you to all of our staff, but most of them are down in the silent auction, figuring everything out so by the time you check out, you'll know exactly what you got and what you owe us and all that kind of thing. So they're never up here, so I can introduce them. But um, just know that they're pretty amazing people who do great work in our community. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors and I will let you know that because of our sponsors, this evening's event is totally underwritten which means that every bit of money that we bring in this evening, all the funding that we bring in, goes to direct services for victims of sexual assault. None of it goes for your food. And that's huge, thank you. <clears throat> um, I also want to add my thanks to Kelly Kurtz. Kelly, are you in the room? Did she leave? Um, Kelly, come on. Um, Kelly has done an amazing job for us, but I don't know how many of you know that all the phone calls you received, all the requests you got, were being done from the Virgin Islands. So the place that you will be visiting is the place where Kelly currently lives. And she came back just for this event. She's here for about three days, so please give her another round of applause. We couldn't have done it without her. I also want to thank the people without whom we would not have this event. Um, our community artists continue to be amazingly generous to us. We have the most phenomenal art, and over and over and over again we hear that there are a lot of auctions in town, but none of them have the art that we do. So we are so grateful to our community and to our artists for the, how much they give to us still on such a regular basis. We also have amazing donors for those beautiful baskets um, that we had down there. I hope you all found something that you wanted. Um, unfortunately, I never get a chance to bid on anything, so um, I get to look at all these things and pick out what I want, and then I never get to seem to sign up for anything. So I hope you all enjoy those wonderful things. I also want to thank Kathy and Jeff uh, for being our MCs. Kathy and Jeff are really good sports because year after year they come back, and we never have a program for them. They, they always have to wing it because out of all the things that we organize, we never seem to get to the point of saying, this is what Kathy and Jeff are supposed to do. So most of what they do, they do on their own. So I think that they deserve a lot of credit because they do a great job. And more than anything, I want to thank you all for being here because without you, um, you are faithful supporters, many of you I see here year after year after year. For those of you who have come back, I want to thank you for returning. And for those of you who are new to the event, I hope you'll find it enjoyable, I hope you'll find it meaningful, and I hope you'll come back another year. We can't be here without you. And without this support, as Brianna said, we could not do the work that we do. And um, the, the survivors that we have, and this year we served almost a thousand people, um, they appreciate it, they appreciate the organization, and I know that I can thank you on behalf of them as well, because this work is important for healing. Um, this evening, I have the pleasure of being able to um, award some wonderful allies in our community. This is the seventh year that we have given outstanding ally awards to community members. And I know that we have a lot of former um, awardees in the room. And I would just like to take a minute, but any of you who have received an award in the past for this, for as being an outstanding ally, would you stand? Because I think we've got a lot of you in the room. So if you've ever received an outstanding ally award, please stand up. I know that we have more because I know the chief of police is out there plotting on how he's going to get you to bid on his cake. So I know he's also in the work with him. Um, the first person I would like to honor this evening is Sergeant Jeremy Graves. Jeremy, would you come forward? has been working with PAVSA for many years. His current title is he is the Sergeant of Lake Superior Drug and, let me see, Drug and Violent Crime Unit. So 
so he's got a big title. That's not what he was doing most when, we, when I met him. He was working in the SCAN unit, which is the Sex, Crimes, Abuse, and Neglect unit. And Jeremy has been one of those people that has been so supportive of victims. He really ensures that we do, um, that, that the police do the work that keeps victims safe and do it in a way in which victims are comfortable. Um, he and Kelly have been partners in crime on many occasions, especially related to the trafficking issue. Jeremy's one of the very first people who was really um, involved in that, and they've um, conspired to get people back from faraway places, and they have um, tracked things down. Um, they're quite a dynamic duo, and so um, we really appreciate the work that Jeremy has done. He's in a different position, but he continues to support the work that we do with victims. Um, the award that Jeremy wins tonight is the Bob Carter Law Enforcement Award. Bob Carter um, passed away a number of years ago. He was a phenomenal police officer who worked on behalf of victims, and each year we honor a police officer in his name. Tonight that person is Jeremy. Will you please give him a hand of applause for the amazing work he does? Thank you very much. Um, I'm very fortunate to get this award. Bob Carter was the first uh, partner I had when I went to the sex crimes unit, and he taught me a lot of things. <clears throat> he taught me that it wasn't an individual position, that we worked as a team. So I look at this award not so much as an individual award, but as a team award. And there's people out here that I'd like to thank such as Mark Rubin, the St. Louis County Attorney's Office, um, the Duluth Police Department, um, IIU Social Services, First Witness, uh, Dr. Bergeron with the same program. Without them, we wouldn't be successful. Um, I'm just a small part in the process, and together we're, we can do, get anything done. So thank you very much. And one of the things I know about Jeremy is that he loves public speaking, so I know that that was really comfortable for him. <laughs> He's a good sport. The next person we'd like to honor this evening is Gary Holquist. Gary, would you come forward, please? Gary's claim to fame is that he has spent 37 years in college basketball. I don't think he looks that old. Um, I first met Gary a number of years ago when he was coaching the basketball team at UMD, and um, a, a young woman was sexually assaulted on campus. And he and his partner, Karen Stromy, both um, were very concerned about the work that was being done at UMD on behalf of sexual violence victims. And he has always been a huge proponent of this issue, and especially where young men are concerned. For years, he ensured that his basketball team made it to an event that we have during Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is called Solidarity, which teaches young men how to be allies in the, in the um, area of sexual assault. He, had, he made sure that they were at Take Back the Night. He made sure that they learned to respect women, and they learned that sexual assault was not okay. He's been a huge role model on campus. His work continues. Um, last year, he was instrumental in ensuring that all of the athletes on campus got basic information about sexual violence prevention. And we just can't thank him enough for the work that he's done and the work that he's done with young men, which is so critical and so unusual. So please give Gary a big hand. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say a few words that uh, um, I was put together some thoughts today that I thought were important. Obviously, this night is a very important night. I've heard it said that you have a complete day when three things happen. Number one, you laugh. Number two, you ponder about something that's important in life and think about a decision you'll make. And number three, you have your emotions move you to tears. So please pardon me. My emotions may move me to tears when I speak to you about this. But thank you, Candy. I'm, I'm so honored and humbled and appreciative of this recognition. 
The work done by PAVSA is important and, and needed now more than ever. Please understand that this recognition is not about me. It really is about Candy and all the special people at PAVSA, as well as the men at the Peacemakers organization. I simply was the conduit that provided the access for PAVSA to educate and mentor the student athletes at UMD on what it is to be a good human in a good society. I created the, the access for selfish reasons over 20 years ago. My daughter Samantha was born. As a dad, I knew my vigil watch over her could not be continuous. I was well aware that at times she would need the help of society, the community in which she lived in to be safe. So to pay it forward, in some small way, I wanted to have my male student athletes that I encountered every day at UMD in athletics become educated on the responsibilities of eliminating violence, and in particular, violence against women in our society. That message must be resonated daily, and it's so much more important now. I'm sure you know the Bulldog Nation lost one of our own last spring. UMD athletic alum, 24-year-old Manny Matula, bless her soul, was taken by a violent way, and she finally was discovered and laid to rest last weekend. I want to share with you a poem that my dad gave me when my own daughter was born. It's about a small boy and his father, titled Four Words. To get his goodnight kiss, he stood beside my chair one night and raised an eager face to me, a face with love alight. And as I gathered in my arms the son God gave to me, I thanked the lad for being good and hoped he'd always be. His little arms crept around my neck, and then I heard him say, Four simple words I shan't forget, four words that made me pray. They turned a mirror on my soul, on secrets no one knew. They startled me. I hear them yet. He said, I'll be like you. To Candy and all the special people at PAVSA, as well as, the men, as people at Menace Peacemakers, thank you for educating and mentoring the student athletes at UMD to be like you. Thank you so much. Our next awardee, I'm not as tall as these people. Um, our next awardee, Marsha, I'm going to mention your name so you can start working your way up here. You're back there in the corner. Um, is our next awardee is a person who's been an advocate for over 17 years. Marsha Kiddo is an advocate on the Fond du Lac Reservation. She is an amazing woman. Um, when I first started at Cavza, we were serving Carleton County as well as St. Louis, Southern St. Louis County. And Marsha actually helped train our advocates because we were responding to both counties. And she always was um, such a good teacher. She taught us so much about what it meant to be an advocate. She's an advocate all the way through and through. So she's one of those die-hard um, people who will, who, who will just fight to the end for a victim. Um, she remains an advocate, and she keeps us accountable. She holds us accountable. When we were working um, as a victim service agency, and we didn't have any Native women on staff, she let us know that that wasn't okay, that women needed to be counseled, they needed to be advocated for by people who looked like them, who could teach them about their own culture, that they could help them heal in that way. And she held us accountable to that and really made us create changes in our organization. Today, she continues to work with us as part of the Duluth Trafficking Task Force, and she plays an instrumental role in ensuring that we reach out to Native women and girls related to the area of trafficking. And so, Marsha, I respect you as an advocate. I'm so glad that you continue to work for us, and thank you for teaching me so much. Please. Gretch Candy, Pavsa, um, 
Marsha Kiddo and Dijan Kajaganashi Mung, Wabishkan Kwadikwe and the Go Ojibwe Mung, Mangan and Dodin, Nagajiwanang and Da. So I always like to use my traditional introduction and say, Buju in and away, Maganag, Buju to all my relatives. Um, I feel privileged to be able to represent Fond du Lac Reservation, Fond du Lac Human Services um, on the Duluth Trafficking Task Force. And when I first uh, started 17 years ago out there, I just had my 17 year anniversary as a sexual assault advocate at Fond du Lac, which is quite a long time, I understand it, as advocates go. Um, that I came to pass as a 40 hour volunteer training as a part of my introduction to sexual assault advocacy. And then as the years went by, I was called upon to assist uh, training other volunteers at uh, PAVSA and at Carleton County and helping with some of the cultural aspects of working with Native women, some sp specific needs that Native women have and some of the historical trauma and things that come into play in daily life. So then it came to trafficking becoming an issue and particularly for Native women, a high percentage of the trafficked uh, women are native and the, uh, the age of entry is 11 to 13. So we're working to protect our native girls and all our girls in our community from this. And so um, I've really enjoyed working with the advocates, the community. I was amazed at the round table that we had, how many agencies in Duluth are doing something about trafficking. And so that keeps me energized and keeps me working. I enjoy getting out to community meetings and, and doing the work out there and with the statewide coalitions. But what I really do the work for is the women, the women in the community that I see on a daily basis. Just the other week I was uh, at a couple of feasts and open houses and the sobriety feast was going on. And as I went by these places, everywhere I went, these community women came up and said, when's women's group? When's the next women's group? And it didn't used to be that way. It used to be that it was really hard to get women to come to group. And so that makes me feel good that the women are wanting to have that good life. And then I went to the jail this afternoon. I go to the Carlton County Jail once a week. And the ladies there are happy just to be able to get out of the cell for a little while. And just recently one of the ladies said, we were praying that you'd come. And so it makes me feel like um, if I can do a little piece to make a difference and help with that, that's what keeps me going in the children. Because I also go over to the Ojibwe school and talk about it's my body and hands are sacred, not for hitting. And when I see those little kids in Walmart, they come and say, you came to my class. And a fifth grader would come and say, I remember you from my Head Start class. So then, um, at our women's gathering, there was a comment on uh, one of the evaluations, and the lady said, I first came to your women's gathering, which we hold every spring, at, with my mother. And this year, I brought my 12-year-old daughter. So through the generations that we're able to make some progress in ending violence against Native women against all our women. That's why I do the work. And so miigwech um, to PAVSA for all that you do. And for Fond du Lac, I'm really grateful to be able to represent the, re the reservation in this work. Thank you. Our final awardee of the evening is not able to be here, but someone is going to be accepting the award in her honor. Um, our final award is Joanne Hoy. Joanne was an administrator at St. Luke's Hospital before we started the Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner Program. She had a number of different titles, but always remained a staunch supporter. She was one of the people who um, initiated the need for a sexual assault nurse examiner program. She was one of the people who helped us go to um, city officials, to hospital administrators, um, to people throughout the community and inform them about how important this was. And she's continued to have um, a real um, commitment to the community-driven program that SANE is. 
Um, last year we did 125 sexual assault um, exams, forensic exams for victims of sexual violence. And this program has been incredibly important. It's existed for six years. And Joanne is the only administrator that has been consistently there throughout the whole six years. And so we're really appreciative of the work that she's done. Marlis Tanner is going to accept the award on behalf of Joanne. So Marlis, would you come forward? <laughs> Joanne, by the way, is on a well-deserved vacation this evening. Can't be here. I am so honored to accept this award for Joanne. Joanne and I have been friends for many years, and not only on a personal level, but a professional level. And as Candy said, she is so dedicated to PASA and the SANE program. She's worked tirelessly to see this to fruition. So when she called me last week and said, unfortunately, she couldn't be here, but she wanted me to accept this award on her behalf. I was so honored. This lady is great. She does wonderful work, but she is so dedicated to the SANE program. I am so proud to accept this on her behalf. I asked her what she would like me to say here tonight, and this is her words, and I quote, it is truly an honor, and there was significant collaboration to have the community SANE program come to fruition and be, stained and be sustained. Thank you very much for this award. One last round of applause for our 2013 Outstanding Allies.